Hello friends, one and all, welcome back to Better Minecraft. Now behind me, well, we've got a massive problem and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see what that is. Look around me, we've got cows absolutely everywhere and not a sheep or chicken in sight. So we're gonna diagnose that problem and we're also gonna try and get me some better gear because I mean, honestly, look at this scrub chain vest. I'm wearing a gold helmet for crying out loud, and of course leather boots, well, you know what they are. So come with me, if you will, on an episode that is all about tips, tricks, and upgrading my stuff. Now we have a massive problem, like I've said, we've got way too many cows, and we've also got no other animals. And if you look at the map, it looks like, yeah, we've got sheep, but oh my god, oh my god, look, this basically highlights the problem itself. We've got sheep everywhere, cows everywhere, but none in the right place. Now there's a sneaky way to fix this that I didn't know about before, but it's actually a really powerful way of doing it. Basically what we can do is open up these pens for one, and if I shift and right click on a cow, oh my god, I can pick it up. And then I can put down the cow in the pen, and then close the gate. And oh my god, it's just so easy. I had, oh, this would have made things so much easier before. So what we're gonna do is get a few cows into the pen. Oh, we don't even need to open the gate as well. That is perfect. And once we have enough cows to get started with, we're gonna cull the rest. That's right, we're gonna go to town on them with my new ax. Okay, so there we go. Three in each pen is a great amount to get started with. Now let's cull some of these cows. Oh yeah, that's right. It's the day of reckoning. And it's time to absolutely destroy some of these heifers. Oh yeah, the sweep attack is gonna come in very handy here. Oh my God, roast beef indeed. Oh, this is amazing. What a way to kill cows. Oh no, I accidentally stripped the oak log with the ax, of course. I forgot they can do that. Oh my god, the shockwave is amazing for this. And what's even better is it doesn't actually affect my NPCs. Oh, what's crazy is actually it, it kicks the cows over the fence. That's amazing, I love it. Okay, so that's a start on the cows. We do have a serious cow problem in the wilderness that we are gonna have to deal with because otherwise too many cows are gonna spawn and it's gonna lag my game completely. Oh no, oh uh, right, I forgot we built a massive wall. How are we gonna get past the wall to the cows? I hadn't even thought about that. Oh, well it turns out the wall isn't that good and we can jump over it. Wait, can monsters jump over it as well? No, oh I see, right. So that's why it's very important to make sure you get the right side of the fence configured because the outside of the wall cannot be gotten across apart from with these gaps here if you jump. But yeah, basically the outside of the wall cannot be crossed, but the inside can be crossed to the outside. Okay, time to slay some beef. Oh, sorry dog. There you go, stay. Now the raccoons and the dog look like they're taking some damage. I guess you could call it cow lateral damage. Oh. But yeah, once we've got enough of these cows out of the way, we can start moving some of the sheep back into their pens. Oh my god, this axe doesn't do a lot of damage, but what it's really good for is getting monsters that are hiding behind walls, because sometimes the shockwaves go through walls. God, these cows get yeeted for miles. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is make a small hole in the fence that we can fix in a bit. Oh, but for the time being, this is just gonna be our way of getting to and from the shepherd's hut because now it's time to fix the sheep. So let's go and clear the sheep pen of cows. Wait, this is the chicken coop. Ah, well, this needs to go as well. Okay, so we've got one gray sheep in there at the moment. Let's clear our hands. 
wash our hands of this dirty business. And let's pick up some sheep now. Does this work? Yeah, oh my god. So not just cows, but sheep can also do it too. And I have no reason to imagine why you wouldn't be able to do this for rabbits. So let's try that as well. Can I pick up a raccoon? Oh my god, yeah, I can pick up a raccoon. Can I eat them? No, I have to put them down manually. Now, one of you guys said that the raccoons in here might be eating the rabbit meat. So I'm going to have to actually take the raccoons out. But this gives me a humane way to get them out without killing them. There we go. Little guys, you're free. So can I pick up a rabbit? Oh, yes, I can. Oh, this is amazing. This is going to be a great way to move things around. Now, this makes me wonder, actually. I can pick up rabbits. I can pick up cows and sheep and raccoons. Can I pick up things like skeletons and zombies? That will have to be tested out. Oh, now it's very important that we make sure that the only sheep within the building's range are inside this pen. And I'll explain to you why that is. So basically, this guy, Vitamumu Darkness, is trying to keep a fixed number of sheep inside this pen. However, it thinks the pen is the entire building's area. And it probably checks them starting from this corner over here. So basically, there are sheep over here in the corner of this building, which it thinks are in the pen. So it doesn't kill those sheep. Instead, it kills these ones, and what we end up is with an empty pen over here and a bunch of sheep over there. So we need to make sure we get all of the sheep that are over here back into their pen. But also we need to make sure that no random sheep from outside will accidentally wander into the pen, like that raccoon just did. But honestly, what boggles my mind is how some sheep got into places like the pigsty. What the hell? Although, you know what, this is kind of like the plot to Babe, right? A bunch of uh, a bunch of sheep befriend a pig who wants to be a sheep dog, maybe? Yeah, maybe that's what they're trying to do. Oh yeah, look at this, we still have a lot of sheep within our walls. And there we go, many pieces of wool later, we've culled almost all of the sheep and the cows. So let that be a lesson to you guys if you're starting a colony at home. Do make sure you double and triple gate your sheep and pigs and cows so they cannot escape, otherwise you'll have the problems that I've had with massive multiplication. Now we're also going to come over here to the shepherd's hut and turn off dying, because what we're going to try and do is micromanage our sheep just a little bit better. When I think about the colony and I think about all of the colours of wool that are required for things, I think mostly it's just white wool that can be dyed into any colour, and then the only other colours are the ones for the enchanter's tent, which are like uh, yellow and purple. Let's take a look. Yeah, yellow and purple. All we really want from wool is white, yellow and purple. So I have here some white dye. Let's just turn them all white to start with as a baseline. Oh, you can't turn sheep without a coat a different color. So we'll also turn off shearing. We're going to go over to the dyer's hut and try and make things a bit more efficient and streamlined over there. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll show you because basically there aren't that many recipes in old Anastasia Halvor's Book of Dyes. We need to conserve as many recipes as possible and make things as efficient as possible. So, in theory, all we need are, I think, about four or five dyes. We need red, we need blue, we need yellow, we need green, and we need black. Oh, and of course, white, so six dyes. From red, green, blue, yellow, and black, we can get almost every single color dye. And so it looks like the dyer now has all of the recipes required to make all of these dyes, right? So cyan is from green and blue, pink and purple make magenta. Basically through those first core dyes, we can find everything. Oh, except, uh, except brown dye, which is a bit of a weird one. So what else is it important to teach the dyer? Well, we're going to need to teach her how to dye terracotta for one, because a lot of the higher end recipes require glazed dyed terracotta. So there we go, if we type in at Minecraft Terraco, we get all of the base Minecraft terracotta recipes. So we'll just throw all of these recipes into here, black terracotta, blue terracotta, etc, etc. So what else is important to dye apart from terracotta? Well, I think wool is very important. We have a couple in here already, like grey wool, but it's going to be very important that we have the other ones as well. So here we go, black wool.
So as you can see, with the terracotta, the dye recipes, the wool dyeing recipes, and the glass dyeing recipes, that's 57 of 60 recipes taken up. That's crazy. So one of the big important things we need to do is get the dyer's hut of all buildings to level four, because we really do need way more recipes in here than any other building, literally just because there are so many dye recipes required. Yeah, there's definitely some tricky items here. Light blue wool, cyan banner, magenta floating car- floating carpet? Not normal carpet, but floating carpet? Is there a different kind of carpet? And so that means it's also very important that our Fletcher, old Mixer Endo, also has all the recipes to get all of the stuff he needs. And he's also going to need floating carpet. Now this isn't from base Minecraft, it's not a vanilla thing. This is from Structurize, which is like the sister mod to Mine Colonies. And uh, yeah, oh, it's basically kind of just the black carpet with string and a build tool. So pretty simple. Also, what you can do is mitigate this by having the sheep give you different color wool at the start. But to keep things cleaner, what we're going to make sure we do is have all of the sheep just be white. And uh, yeah, focus on just getting white wool. So here we go. Yeah, the sheep are all grown up now and non sheared with those lovely, lovely warm coats for this winter weather we're having. Actually, no, it's still pretty warm. And there we go, a lovely array of lovely white sheep. Dying the sheep was a cool idea, but the problem is when like a blue sheep and a red sheep make a baby, they make a purple sheep. And we don't really want all of those weird colors. We only want the base colors, so we're gonna stick with white. Oh, now, as you can see, cows are already escaping, so I'm really worried about this plan, if it's going to work. But you know what? If we persevere, we might be okay. Maybe we missed this guy. Maybe he was hiding inside the hut. So, yeah, Alyssa, who was working on the dyer, is now supplied with 77... Wait. Oh, right, she's supplied... Okay, yeah. Is now supplied with 77% of the things she needs. And as we scroll down this list, we know for a fact so many of these things can be made. Ooh, cross spruce oak, we can't make yet. But as we scroll down the list, you can see we start to get to things like white concrete, red concrete, which reminds me actually, we built a concrete mixer's hut ages ago. And you know what? I don't think I've ever been over and visited it. And I think it might even still be level one. So let's go and check it out, see what it's doing. And here he is, right on the edge of the, co you know what? Yeah, oh, a warfish Gilmore. I remember you, old scorpion. I think this hut is still level one. What a travesty. What a joke. And you know what? That's a perfect role for Booger, who is a low level builder. So get over here and make this mixer level two. Aha, now we are in luck. So it looks like the concrete mixer can dye concrete himself, and we don't need to use the dyer's hut. That's huge. That's amazing. So let's keep the party train going then. What else is quite important for Alyssa that we don't know how to make? The crossed spruce oak is one. And the loom is another thing. So a loom is made by a Fletcher and it's made out of, any, wait, what? Any old planks and some string? That's crazy, that's such an easy recipe. There we go, spruce planks, dark oak planks, build tool makes vertical dark oak, and this recipe will get you actually all of the different types of dark oak spruce frame variations. Boom. So that's the boring bits over. We've done basically most of the crafting recipes now. Let's get down to the juice. Oh, but before we do, you guys have also said, hang on a sec, I know I'm gonna get my university to level four, but there are a few researches I still haven't done. And you know what? You are actually right. There's a few researches here and there that really could use my attention. Like for example, oh my God, resurrection chance, of course, we definitely want this. But that does need the graveyard to be level three, which apparently it's still only level two. But there's definitely some important researches here. So we're gonna get some golden apples for resilience. We're gonna get some cookies for gorger. And we're gonna get some iron boots for Undertaker Emergency, which will let our Undertaker run instead of walk. So cookies, boots, and golden apples. 
Oh my god, look at that. Booger Sugar with the Concrete Mixer's Hut level 2. Well, you want to roll, Booger. It's a shame that no other buildings are level uh, level 1. So we can't actually use you for anything else. In fact, why not just get Booger to work on his hut? That's right, at least get your own hut, Booger, up to level 3. It requires materials that we can get no sweat. And so we return to Harvard with the materials required for this research. Let's get it done. We've been wasting too much time already. So, resilience. Boom. Gorgia. Boom. And Undertaker Emergency. Boom. Also, we're going to try and get the Undertaker's head up to level 3, because again, it's just something that we missed. Oh man, the ripe, raw smell of progress. There's nothing sweeter than just knowing the changes you're making around the colony are having a real big impact and speeding things up. Man, but you know what? We really do need a waystone over here by the Mystical District. In fact, what level is the Mystic Site? Level 2. Well, why not push this to level 3 as well? So the final piece of the puzzle is the florist. Like I said, this guy has been making all kinds of flowers. Oh, good job, any old thing. This guy's been making all kinds of flowers, but now that's kind of redundant. What we want to do is make sure he's only making the flowers that are required for dye. The ones that we set up in the dyer's hut. So that's poppies. Wait, you can deactivate max one option. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I forgot about this. Right, okay. And which one did we deactivate? Ferns. Okay. So we do know what we're doing here. Never mind. Let's turn ferns back on because they're pretty cool. I like ferns. And instead we're going to turn off, I think, rose bushes, because we've already got red from poppies. Okay, so second on our list of things to do is to gather up experience. Now, luckily enough, whoa, so killing all of those cows and sheep actually gave me 11 levels. Boom, put those in the book. You guys have also said that if I go around to all of the furnaces on the colony, they'll all be full of XP when I try and take things out. So, when we made this coal, did I get the XP out of that? Here we go. Smelting nether bricks for free XP, why not? One level, it'll do. Where's next? Aha, uh -huh, of course the smeltery. This guy must have loads of XP stacked up for days. Wait, it's, it's not... Can I put stuff in here manually? Oh my god, wow, yeah, look at that, nine levels. That's crazy. Into the book you go. Let's try the next one. There's one over here. Boom. Oh, wait, I use all the raw iron. Well, I've got other things, haven't I? Gold. Raw gold. Boom, 10 levels. Whoa, this is crazy. So if you're hard up for experience on your own Mine Colonies playthrough, check this out. Boom, wait. Oh, what? What a joke. Chuckles, did you just, did you just take my experience? Oh, man. Well, never mind. So where else in the colony is there a smelter? Preferably one that gets a lot of use. The blacksmith, maybe? No, I don't think he actually uses any furnaces. No, he's got one for decoration. But all he really does is hit iron. Same with the stonemason. There's nothing here. Oh, but of course the stone smelter. That's going to be a big one. But whoa, 16 levels. That's the goods. And it looks like the tome is very close to being full. The glass blower has a furnace, so let's do that. Boom, make me one gold ingot. Boom, uh, only one level, but that's still pretty good. And last but not least, the restaurant. And so the restaurant has been one of the first buildings we kind of put down here. So it's probably going to have XP for like, well, a crazy amount of XP, I think. Boom, whoa, 14 levels. 24 levels! Oh my god, wait, so before I take the last bit of beef out of here, I'm gonna have to go and make myself another XP tome. I did not expect that much XP to be stored up in those furnaces. That's crazy! Oh uh, no, I'm out of ender pearls in my warehouse, but the nether miner apparently can make ender pearls. So let's see if there's any in the warehouse. Aha, uh -huh. we're in luck too. That was close. Oh, hey, yeah, so check this out. I found this 
in my warehouse. I'm not quite sure how it got here, but it's called Ambient Disc Soothing Cinders from Quark. So what I want to do is, uh, well, I want to check it out and listen to it. I'm all about the fresh beats. So here we go. Soothing Cinders. Oh, wait, hang on a sec. This is just, this is just the sound of a fire. I mean, it, it kind of works because it's right next to a fire, but okay, well, yeah, I mean, interesting. I guess it's amb an ambience disc, right? So it makes sense. So here we are, another XP tome. We're gonna dump another 24 levels into this and head back to the restaurant. Man, who knew there would be so much XP nestled away in these ovens? Oh, that reminds me, what about the bakery? Steaks. Oh, there we go, 17 levels into the book. Oh man, this is crazy. We've got basically two full tomes at level 30. That's gonna mean we can really enchant some amazing gear. So next on my list of things that we're gonna do to upgrade is build a shield. Now I know what you're thinking, what are you talking about? You've already got a shield, or rather you had a shield. Uh, how are you gonna make a better shield? Well, yeah, in better Minecraft, there is a way to make better shields. Look at this, shield. Now, oh my God, there's a whole ton of them, prismarine shields. But basically what we're gonna go for is a diamond shield that's gonna give us 98% damage reduction. And that is insanely good. Basically, you take a normal shield, which is just iron ingots and planks, no sweat. You add ooh, three diamonds, so it's not cheap, but 98% damage reduction is pretty freaking huge. One, two, three. Hoo -hoo. And there we go, a diamond shield. Now I am ready to tank whatever the world has to bring against me. So we're going to replace our golden helmet back for this Loki style helmet. It's not got a massive amount of protection, but what we could do is put a high level protection enchantment on it just to bring that protection up. So do we have a book of protection in the computer? There we go, enchanted book, protection three. Let's see if we can put this on our hat. And we also get to rename it. So why not use this opportunity to give this a badass name? And we're gonna call it the Loki Helm because it kind of looks a bit like Loki. So here we go, I've got my fully enchanted Loki Helm. I've got my iron chest plate, protection three, I'm breaking three. Diamond leggings of protection three. My running boots, of course, wanderers. But then when combat starts, I've got my iron boots of protection that I can slip into. So the question is, now that I've got all this amazing gear, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go to test it out? Well, I've had an idea with that. So basically we've been trying to go around the nether, uh, but it's a bit tricky because it's just really hard to travel around the nether. But I had a really, but I had a really good idea. So basically we have a waystone in the nether. It's in hell. We need three levels to get there, but what that means is we can get on our dragon, use the waystone, and then we're gonna have a dragon in the nether, which is gonna be huge. So let's go gather up our dragon and then head to the nether to see what's cooking. Oops, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Oh my God, I did it again. Oh my God. Oh, and here we are, oh. Here we are in the nether with a dragon. Unfortunately, we're in the house where I was when I put down the uh, the thing before, but that's not a problem. Okay, let's get off the dragon. Put our XP back in the tome to keep it safe. And we're gonna dig up this waystone to take it somewhere else. Aha, yes, at last, we're free. Now I'm gonna put my shield away for the moment so that it makes things easier to see. But oh man, yeah, flying around the nether on a dragon, so much easier, this is crazy. Now I've got to be careful, the nether is a dangerous place and it could be the best way to kill my dragon. But let's not think about that. Now we're looking for pre-generated structures in the nether that could have valuable treasures. Oh, now, that looks like one. I can see a spawner in there. Oh no, wait, I think that's just like a, a piglin place. Although it turns out actually navigating around the nether, which is basically like a giant cave, 
is actually pretty tough. Oh my God, it's actually pretty tough. Oh, here's a fortress thing. Let's check this out. Stay here, my friend. Aha, a chest. Don't mind if I do. Oh, what's that? A netherite? Oh no, stone, stone sword. Oh no! Well, never mind. Let's keep going. See if we can find another chest. Oh my god, this biome is just so bright. Aha, what's this down here? Looks very interesting. Lots and lots of fire. Aha, this is definitely something cool. Lots and lots of blackstone. This could be what they say is a blackstone fortress. Oh, sounds like rude dudes. Uh-oh. I think I need my shield for this. Oh, no. So I have just discovered I cannot use my shield with this axe because when I use right click with the axe, it tries to do a weird swipe. Oh, hello, crimson chest with, ah, oh, loads of, oh, ancient debris, yes. The very good stuff. Well, that's it for this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. This episode, we configured our Dyer's Huts completely, got everything streamlined, so now all of the glazed terracotta, the stained glass, the carpets, the wool, it's all been cleaned up, and everything our builders could possibly need, they have a way of getting. We also tidied up our animals, so they're all working now in the correct way they should, and that's fantastic news. We also upgraded our gear, enchanted our helmet, built this very cool diamond shield. So what I want to do next episode is try and explore some other areas in this mod pack. And there's a whole load of other bosses we could try and take on as well. Not to mention the Twilight Forest, which is also a place we could explore. So next episode I think is going to be a grand old boss hunt. Also, if you've watched up to this far, make sure you do hit like down below because every single thumbs up means a lot. And also, if you're fancy, drop a comment too. A massive thank you to all of my Patreon dudes and my YouTube members. And until next time, take care.